you're looking for a game that has you shrink to one quarter your size, don adorable wizardry wares, and must save evil to the core rubber duckies from pools of hydrofluoric acid, that's messed up, bro. But then this is the game for you! Hey, folks, and welcome to a GameX review of Lumo, published by Rising Star Games and developed by... Wait, Triple L Limited. So, like... I will say as a disclaimer, no, you need not adjust your browser quality. This game made it hell for any of my recording software to work properly, so I had to settle on something that occasionally diminishes in quality, but not too much that it ruins the experience. I hope this will be something that should be fixed when the game is due official release on May 24th. Love you. You enjoy the intro screen, load up the main menu, and choose your country of power. I mean, I love anime and all, so maybe. But the Swedes are so nice. Even- Hello. Hi? Was that you, Great Britain? Alright, I get the hint. We're playing Britain, boys! Next, you have to choose your character, gender, and color of clothing. Right, so I'm gonna be a male, so I can, you know, relate with the protagonist, of course. I am from the Midlands of Ireland, and most of the guys wear black or white hoodies. Hmm. Adidas or Nike? Adidas or Nike? Let's roll with Adidas! You choose your preferred directional configuration, and with that I also recommend playing with the controller, and then jump into the game. Wow, this run animation. It looks so real, yet oddly familiar. Who are you? What are you doing in my fields? Go on, get out with you! I know your father! You enter what appears to be a gaming convention that only three adult males are attending. Before getting zapped by a Call of Duty ray gun and then transported to the game world of Lumo. Oh, you're so cute. Immediately, you're introduced to the core progression of the game. Walk to a door, leave that room, generate the next room coinciding with it, and so on in this manner. Again, this game does what I respect, not baby feed you with what to do. In the words of the developers, they state that Lumo is intended as a voyage of player discovery, with minimal hints or hand-holding. Beautifully straightforward. You see a floating book, and you're like, huh, you can't get it, because you can't jump very high. So you progress through the doors, find another floating thing that you can reach, it gives you a higher jump, then you just retrace your steps to get to the first shiny floaty thingy. Simples. It's through this journey, however, that you are met by a repetitively appearing character. Oh, hey cuteness. You wanna come home with me? Take a nice bath. I'll get the suds up nice and hot. I don't like you, rubber ducky. This floating piece of yellow troll face is an optional collectible. If you somehow manage to rescue this Satan reincarnate and leave through any door, it saves it. And you don't have to do it again. And I have an OCD for this kind of thing, so... Mm. Mm -hmm, rubber ducky. As you progress through the game, you're met with more and more variants in level and puzzle design that has you either traversing dangerous platforms, using new tools to get to the next door, or making you use just good old reflexes and timing. When you play this game, you completely forget that the background never actually changes. It, it doesn't change. When you walk through a door, all you think about is, what's gonna show up next? Or is that lever to control the water level in this room? On that topic, the level design is great. Small and simple realistically, but even when the room you enter is just a hallway connecting to a more important room, there's cute little details thrown in. Not to mention that these little changes might even be there for a reason. If you have the curiosity for adventure, explore in any room you like, and what at first seems to be there just for decor inadvertently leads you to a secret room with this thing. Hold on a sec. A cassette tape. Huh. That's a weird way to say mp3. And each major room you enter is a mixed bag. It either has elements you've met before and are familiar with, or just throws a total curveball. Wait, Donkey Kong? I very much presume touching the barrels is instant. Yeah, it's instant death. Patience, young one. Just approach the slope. <sighs> I did it! I- Wait. No. Oh, rubber ducky. Oh, you shouldn't be here, rubber ducky. You shouldn't- you, rubber ducky! Even better, or worse, depending on how you view it, sometimes the level will take a flavor of an easy traversing concept and mix it with a difficult tool to use. Ball balancing, rotating platforms, infinitely deep acid baths, and... Rubber ducky! All of these elements make for a potentially time-consuming but unique and, dare I say, entertaining form of level design. The thing that feels best about this game is when you succeed that difficult slash time-consuming level. You finally step on that platform in front of a door after using bubbles that can burst if you don't hit them right, or dissolving platforms that took you four or five attempts to make because you didn't jump enough. It feels like a genuine victory, however that feeling can be stripped away by principal dick face over here because you see the room you just enter, you think, oh yeah, this doesn't seem so bad, it's fine. And then you spot where that fucking duck is and you're like, how did you even get there? Like, do you hate me? Is that it? Do you hate me? 
smug little son of a- The soundtrack to the game is pleasant. It's not in your face, and it's actually quite relaxing, which you need depending on how much a room can trouble you. You forget it's there, but it always is. I would even listen to this kind of music if I knew I was going to be riding for a while or something, just to have in the background, so in that regard, it fits the game perfectly. As a verdict, this game was actually super fun to play. As I've mentioned in previous videos, I'm not much of a puzzle guy, but a lot of this game comes down to just your reaction or timing, which I very much can enjoy in a game. Your character is cute, the soundtrack is just right, the puzzles and obstacles grow with difficulty and design the further you progress. It was just pleasant. And if this game can make me enjoy a classic isometric style adventure, which I didn't really enjoy before, then I would write this game a success because I did. An entertaining time consumer which gives you feelings of achievement and has an enjoyable tactical approach. Thanks so much for watching this review guys. As always, if you'd like to see more videos and reviews like this, you can click the box right here. And if you'd like to keep up to date with more upcoming videos, you can subscribe to us down below. Don't forget that if you want to find what could be the next game for you to enjoy while saving your time and money, check out our website coming very soon at GameX.io, which uses your gaming history to recommend the right game for you. Love, 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 love. Hey guys, just to continue on my topic from before about the beautiful level design and things like that, the game actually gets incredibly more beautiful. The footage that I have here does not give enough justice to the game later on. However, unfortunately, due to my software recording thing, it kind of was freaking out a little bit more, so I just used what I had. So, thank you again so much for watching this review, and as we were saying, if you want to see more videos like this one at better quality, check out our channel. Ducky, oh my god! Where they were.